So I've decided to upgrade my Snotty NAS with a 10 gigabyte network card and potentially an SSD cache. I thought this was gonna be a straightforward process. Plug in the card, install the SSDs, and boom. Blazing fast transfers, right? Not quite. Turns out I had a few roadblocks along the way, I had to take an uninspected trip, do a little bit more deep research, and even SSH into the NAS to unlock some hidden features. But by the end, it was, you know, I got everything running, tested speed across 1, 2, 0.5, 5, and even 10 gig to, to really see what the transfer speeds are and is it worth it? Is it worth it for you? And let me tell you, some of the results and some of the surprises, surprises along the way was not what I was expecting, but with that, let's get into it. So I started the whole process of installing the Synology E10 GT2 T1 Mini 10 gig network card. Everything installed cleanly, no itch issues, so naturally I figured, let's run some file transfers. But that's when I hit a wall. Even though I had a 10 gigabit network card set up, I couldn't get speeds above 280 megabytes per second. Nowhere near the 900 megabytes per second that, you know, it was rated for, what I was expecting, at least what I'd read up on. That's when I started looking and what could be the bot, what could really be bottlenecking my speeds. After digging through forums, testing different files, I realized something. My NAS only has two hard drives. And two hard drives in RAID 1 tops out at around 280 megabytes per second. So even though I had a 10 gigabyte connection, my store drives were a real limitation, at least for now. So I was like, maybe SSD caching would fix it. I didn't know exactly what SSD caching was, but to me, um, if I set up an SSD cache, my files would go from my device to the SSD cache and then the SSD cache would then, you know, offload it to the hard drives at some point, right? That's just kind of what made sense in my mind. I don't know why, maybe, maybe it does yours too. And that's why you're at this video. Um, but I had an SSD laying around, I installed it. And as I'm setting up the SSD cache, I realized that I can only do read only SSD cache through Synology because I only have one drive. So I was like, hmm, why not? Let's run the test. So I installed it, did the read only cache and did another file transfer test. Same speeds, 280 megabytes a second. At this point, I'm thinking, maybe if I install a second SSD and enable read write caching, maybe that'll fix the issue. So that's where, I ran into another roadblock, right? So first of all, I didn't want to mix brands. I had a Crucial P3. I wanted to make sure I get the same Crucial P3, the exact same sword size. So if it doesn't fix my issues, I know for certain that it's not because I don't have two different SSDs. So the problem with that was the only place that had my exact SSD, you know, cause I wanted it that day so I can get testing it was a Best Buy almost a little over an hour away. So after work, hopped in the car, drove there, and with traffic, you know, it was a two and a half hour trip, but I did successfully grab the SSD. So I'm finally back home thinking, I'm ready to run the test again, let's get this installed. So after I installed the second SSD, I set up read write caching, and was absolutely sure this was gonna fix my slow transfer speeds, cause what else could it be, right? I ran the test again, and- Why won't you work? And no change, still stuck at 280 megabytes per second. And that's when it dawned on me. Maybe I don't know how caching works. So I even sat here and waited, you know, two or three days after I'd installed it to say, maybe this, the NAS is a, it doesn't know what it's looking at. You know, maybe it takes time for it to attach and really, you know, set up the whole process of transfer to the SD, to the hard drive. So I sat and wait, nothing. I tried to read-only cache again, tried, you know, read, write, unplugging it, you know, everything you could think of, right? And then I started troubleshooting, checking the cache settings, setting up, a, you know, a manual IP address for the, the LAN, the 10 gig LAN specifically, but no matter what, files weren't transferring any faster. That's when I did a little bit deeper research and realized I've completely misconstrued exactly how the SSD cache even works, especially on a Synology NAS anyways. Um, it doesn't accelerate normal file transfers. It's apparently designed to speed up tasks like database queries, Docker containers, 
and you know vm operations something that's you know task heavy in that nature um so for everyday file transfers though it does almost nothing. yes it's, yeah that's where i got frustrated because here i am i spent two days three days stalin going you know um, it's, it's everything in the book right but that's what I found the GitHub project and a YouTube video kind of explaining the, the project and I'll link that in the description below um, of how to actually repurpose the cache into, you know, an SSD storage pool. So I was thinking maybe if I set my SSD storage pool up, I can just transfer files from my device to the SSD storage and then later whenever I'm done, I can just put it on my hard drives, right? Um, but yeah, that's so with the project, with the GitHub project, essentially you SSH into the NAS, copy the, the script file to your NAS, run it. And I set up an SSD in RAID 0 because I don't care about redundancy. I'm just here to edit my files and then put them on my hard drive at some point. Um, and I've also automated a daily backup um, with a Docker container that will look for the files in that shared folder within the SSD storage pool. And if the file exists on the hard drive, it will just simply replace it with the most up to date and voila. Um, and then now I potentially had a high working SSD storage pool and I could actually run the test. So before we get into actual tests, I want to go over, you know, theoretical max speed you want to get with each, with each, um, I guess one gig, 2.5, 5 and 10. Um, so at one gig, you're supposed to get top out at 125 around ish. Um, that's the theoretical max speed and you're supposed to get 110 to 115. That's if you remember my previous video, that's exactly what we got. Um, now for 2.5, you're supposed to get around 312.5 or around 250, 280, which, um, which is what I was stuck at, at, was topped out at 280, was a 2.5 gig. So we know that was working. Five gigs, 625 megabytes per second is the max and you're supposed to get between five and 600. And then 10 gig, the theoretical max is 1250 and you're supposed to get between the nine and 1100 megabytes. Now, for the actual file transfer. So again, I'm doing a 75 gigabyte file test because I feel like that made the most sense in terms of um, three cameras, you know, high resolution, 4K 30, sometimes 4K 60, um, sometimes Dolby, sometimes I'm doing ProRes Log. ProRes Log is gonna be extremely bigger than this, but for the most part, I feel like I haven't had a need to use that yet. Um, but yeah, so for one gig at around 110 megabytes per second, it took about 11 minutes and 30 seconds. 2.5 gig is at 270 megabytes per second. I got four and four minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, five gig at around 550 megabytes per second. I want to say took me two minutes and around 20 seconds. And for 10 gig at around 900, 950 megabytes per second, I got a minute and 20 seconds. So to conclude all this mess and hopefully you stuck, stuck with me through this, this journey of trying to get this set up. Um, do I recommend 10, 10 gig for my use case? I think personally, the sweet spot is 2.5 and five gig. Cause two and a half, two point two, two and a half, three minutes is really not that bad transferring a file that big. Um, the main thing was just making sure I had faster speeds cause for editing, uh, especially at one gig, sometimes I'd have issues like trying to you know scroll through it it'd be skippy and it wasn't the machine it's because it wasn't loaded in or if i took a break and came back it had to kick back up because then the nas will actually um go to like idle and it won't be like sending or receiving data so that's another issue i was having so five gig seems to be the sweet spot in terms for me in editing uh 10 gig i mean i've got 10 gig that's the only reason i feel like if you have something else will use it um, they don't make a five gig card um and in terms of pricing the 10 gig it 10 gig network cards were like 110 150 plus another 150 to 200 for the thunderbolt um to 10 gig card is another you know like i said 200 um and then the i think it's 40 or 45 bucks for the five gig network and then 30 bucks for the 2.5 so that's i feel like that's perfect five gigs you know, perfectly fine. A lot of even Windows PCs, if you have a higher end motherboard, has 2.5 and 5. Um, so I feel like, you know, that's probably the way to go. If, if you had to choose and you like on a budget constraint, 5 is going to be perfectly fine. Um, I think I could see maybe if you're like I said, if you're pro as log, 
extremely large file, like three, 400 gigabytes because I've had the same files. Um, you're gonna think if it takes a 10 gig, 1.2 for 75 times it by four. So it's like five minutes versus 10 minutes for five gigs. So, you know, you give and take, pick and choose your battles, but hopefully you've enjoyed the, the video, enjoyed the journey, and hopefully I've helped you figure out the reason your NAS may be not um, hitting certain speeds. And if you have any questions, make sure to drop them down below. I'll definitely make sure I answer whatever questions you might have on this. And stay tuned, because I'm gonna make sure I upgrade the RAM in this bad boy and get some more Docker stuff run up um, and really explain, do you really need more RAM for your use case? Uh, but yeah, with that, hopefully you like, leave a like if you like, um, sub if you want more. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.